You're listening to Soap Dirt, the latest in television entertainment news. Hey there, CBS soap opera fans. This is Soap Dirt on YouTube, and we are here with your latest edition of Daily Spoilers for the week ahead, April 24th through 28th, 2023, on YNR. There's a whole bunch of stuff happening, and Friday the 28th is when May Sweeps kicks off, and we are going to see some huge movement in the main storylines. And the big headline this week is that Phyllis reveals herself to Summer that she's alive and I'm sure this is all part of her scheme to cover her tracks. Let's dig in to the official CBS spoilers for the week ahead on YNR. Reach down right now and click that subscribe button if you're not already following us on YouTube so that you don't miss any of your latest soap opera spoilers that you need for the days and weeks ahead. On Monday, April 24th, 2023 on YNR, we're in episode 142 of season 50, and we are going to see Chelsea Newman taking a big step with Billy Abbott. Yep, these two are going to hit the sheets and everything is amping up for them. And so that's exciting news for those two. Plus, we're going to see Victor pushing Tucker McCall. He's got the purchase documents for the sale of McCall Holdings. And Tucker's going to steal Victor's pen and he's going to sign them. And it looks like he might be ready to leave town. We're also going to see Ashley Abbott standing firm against Jack Abbott. Of course, this is the ongoing animosity. He doesn't like her being around Tucker. She doesn't like him being around Diane Jenkins. And Jack is certain that Diane is innocent of the crime of which she's been accused and continues to fight for her. And when things get nasty between them, again, Jack is going to tell her, you know, you can just move out of the family mansion. So they are definitely not getting along. Then it's Young and the Restless episode on Tuesday, April 25th, season 50, episode 143. We're going to see Tucker McCall having a tantrum and packing his bags. Already on Monday, he'll have asked Audra to leave town with him, and she refuses. She's got other irons in the fire. And then Ashley Abbott comes over to see Tucker. And remember, she's fresh off this argument with Jack about Diane and also about Tucker. And Tucker has a little mini fit, and he tells her there's nothing left for him. He's just going to leave town, yada, yada, yada. I've got no one. I've got nothing. And she says, well, why don't you come live with me? And the big question is, is Ashley doing this because she wants Tucker living with her or she just wants to rub Jack the wrong way? Either way, it should be fun. That same day, we're going to see Victor cutting ties with someone he considers an ally. So we have to consider who this is. There's not a lot of people that Victor considers allies. And I'm wondering, speculating, the official spoiler is that he cuts ties with someone who's an ally. But what I'm wondering is if it's Michael Baldwin, because Michael has taken on the case of defending Diane, which Nikki Newman wasn't happy about and which Victor Newman won't be happy about. So we have to wonder if Victor is going to tell Michael to take a hike, which that's not a good idea because Michael is definitely comfortable playing in the gray areas of the law on behalf of him and of Newman Enterprises. Also on Tuesday, we're going to see Diane Jenkins needing help and Jack Abbott crossing lines to make it happen. So I'm kind of wondering if he's going to try and bribe a judge or what he's going to do because he definitely wants Diane out of jail. He wants her to have bail. He said that he would get her on an ankle monitor and do all this stuff so that they wouldn't treat her like a flight risk. And we'll just have to see how that goes. Then it's midweek. Wednesday, April 26th, episode 144 of season 50. And we're going to see Nate Hastings tempted by an invitation. And no doubt this is from Victoria Newman. There's an out-of-town business trip and she asked Nate to go along. She has been trying to get in Nate's pants for a while. They almost did the deed on her desk the other day until Nick Newman blocked her fun and beat down the door until they had to get dressed. And she's continuing to commit what I feel is sexual harassment by the very definition of it, she definitely is doing it. She's in a position of power. She controls his job and she is aggressively hitting on him when he is involved with someone else. And of course he's no saint, but this is textbook sexual harassment. And by trying to get him out of town alone with her, she wants to ensure she can get that D without getting interrupted. The question is, is will Elena tolerate this? Will Nick tolerate this? There's 
plenty of movement on that plot as we go into May sweeps starting on Friday. We also see Victor and Adam Newman reaching an agreement. Victor has bought Tucker McCall's company and Victor wanted Adam to run it. And then there's other official spoilers for the week ahead showing that Victor sits down with Nick and he wants Nick to consider going to work for Adam at McCall Holdings. He said he's going to change the name as well. He basically wants Nick to leave as COO of Newman Enterprises and instead work as Adam's COO. He's trying to get the boys to get along better, which is all very interesting because, of course, Sally is dating one and pregnant by the other. But something works out well midweek for Victor and Adam. Then it's Young and the Restless episode Thursday, April 27th, 2023, episode 1. 145 season 50. And we are going to see Nate covering his tracks, cleaning up behind himself. No doubt this is more of his sketchy behavior and he's trying to cover up so Elena doesn't figure out that he has been playing tonsil hockey with his boss. This guy is deplorable, but damn, he's so nice looking. So... <laughs> Also on Thursday, Phyllis Summers tries to explain herself, and that's because she creeps back into Genoa City, and she appears to Summer Newman, who is stunned, and then she's like, is this real? They hug, and then Phyllis is going to try and explain things, and the other thing is that she doesn't want Summer to tell Daniel Romilotti that she's alive. We did another video about how Phyllis could get away with all this if you look in the Young and the Restless playlist on our channel, because there's definitely some lies she can tell because now that she's killed Stark, he can't contradict anything she says and no one's going to believe Diane because of how well they set her up. So Phyllis can sell whatever narrative she wants to get herself out of this mess and make sure her kids don't hate her. So it'll be very interesting to see exactly how she plays this. We're also going to see Victoria accusing Nick of disloyalty. Now the question is, is that because he decides to consider his dad's offer to leave her and go work for Adam? Or is this about him interfering with her love life when she has left him alone about Sally? Interesting stuff. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please click the subscribe button below so you don't miss any of your top Young and the Restless spoilers, news, and updates. Now, let's talk about Friday, April 28th on YNR, episode 146 of season 50. Friday is the day when May Sweeps officially kicks off, even though it's April 28th, and this is when we're going to see all the big movement on these stories. So this will be a huge, big cliffhanger episode is what we're expecting to see. On Friday, the official spoilers say that Lauren Fenmore is disappointed by Michael Baldwin. No doubt this is because he is aggressively pursuing the case of defending Diane. And as he goes along, he becomes more and more certain that Jeremy Stark is the culprit. But of course, the problem is no one can find Jeremy Stark and that's because Phyllis killed him. We also, on Friday, see Jack doing something impulsive. I'm sure this related to Diane's crisis. And then we're going to see Summer having a disagreement with Daniel. And we have to wonder if... That's because she knows their mother is alive and is still keeping the secret. Daniel is not at all certain that Diane did this. He is leaning more towards Stark as the perpetrator. But if Phyllis told some of the lies that we suggested might help her get away with this, then she might still have Summer convinced that this whole mess and her fake death is Diane Jenkins' fault. We'll have to see how that plays out, but it all looks really exciting heading into May sweeps. Don't miss a moment. Be sure and follow us on YouTube. Check back at SoapDirt.com for all your latest YNR spoilers and keep watching as Phyllis Summers pops up alive in Genoa City next week. Thank you for being a loyal listener. Follow us wherever you get your podcast because you don't want to miss the next episode. Soap Dirt is on all the major podcast platforms, including Apple Podcast, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and more. 